<laughs> Robin. Holy shit. <laughs> I was, I was that was amazing. Sweating that was, after that. We were talking about it the whole break with everybody. and uh, Tim Conway was amazing. That was uh, so much fun. Just was. he... He was hilarious. To that that the way he was undermining everything we were trying to do. I just started looking down, praying that he didn't notice Don't me. Don't call on right. me. Don't right. call on I felt me. Felt like I was right? back at school. That's what it felt like. At one point, I just started looking down. I'm like, I don't want any part of this. Oh really? Don't call oh, fuck on yeah. me. Oh fuck yeah! In a in a good way. I was like, oh god. And then you get halfway through like your question or whatever right. it is, and then in your head you realize, oh no, I'm not, <laughs> no. I'm not doing this. I, I'm failing miserably. Oh, that was unbelievable. <laughs> it was very funny. Yeah, it was, was very funny. He's almost 80 years. He'll be 80 in December. And he's yeah. just knocking. And the funny Sharp thing is, is all hell. But he knows the whole dynamic when an older gentleman comes in. Like, like Jimmy mentions Gleason and he goes, who? <laughs> right. And, and <laughs> your, your natural response is to be sympathetic and be, oh, uh, Jackie Gleason. And you, then you realize, oh, he's fucking with me. Yes. Of course he knows Jackie Gleason. <laughs> That was good. He was very enjoyable. Oh, I love the abuse. That was a lot of fun. Brian said after the one question, he goes, okay, I know. Now I'm just not going to say anything. <laughs> yeah, I think that really shook Brian to his core. <laughs> uh, the compliments walking down the hall. Very busy with guests today. Trying so hard to, yeah. to say something that he was going to. Holy shit. And then we were talking about how he was just throwing up brick walls. It's like, what? And yeah, every turn. So the he's like, yeah. Boom, brick wall, and then you turn to try to get around it. What? Boom, another wall. Which made for great radio, but you oh, really yeah. do want to have an interview with that guy because he's seen everything. You have. Like where he came yeah. from and how. Was he even a jockey? Yeah, that I think he was telling the truth about. But we're not sure. Not absolutely sure. I'm not absolutely sure he was actually a jockey. His book. He's probably somewhere right now laughing. Oh, they bought the oh, jockey. a jockey. Just because I'm a short guy, a oh. short fella. That was. Funny. I don't know if that was true. I have no. Uh, idea. I have it. no idea. Bring love Nick in, or you're fired. Uh, Nick Offerman from <laughs> Parks and Rec. <clears throat> oh, I didn't recognize him. Of course. Oh yeah. How Good morning, doing, Nick. How you doing, man? Okay. Take a seat. Anthony, Jim Norton. Uh, we do the we do the immediately on the air thing. Yeah. So we're actually on the air. We just got. We just don't got, worry about it. I don't want you to like rush or anything. We just got beat up by Tim Conway. Yeah, That's Tim, what I heard. Tim Conway. Beat, just, yeah. uh, he just destroyed the entire room. <laughs> He's not a nice guy. No. He's a mean little prick. <laughs> right. <laughs> he just gave me a rather baleful look in the men's room. <laughs> Did he? Yeah, he'll do that. I gave him a dollar. He was <laughs> a mean little bastard he was. <laughs> wow. Kind of enjoyable, but it was kind of like, you know, expecting Tim Conway from the Cal Burnett show and fucking Amon Gert showed up. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> that was rough. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I'm sure his book is really uh, good, so but we're not, not a... talking about his book anymore. Yeah. So we're talking yeah. about... Uh... There's not even a picture in his book. No, it's, it's about his, his life, and there's not one picture. Nick Offman has a book. <laughs> a very funny guy. Uh, Paddle Your Own Canoe. It's one man's fundamentals for delicious living. And what exactly is... Because we just got the book. What exactly is the, the push-up? Is it your life story, or is it... Um, well, I, I've been touring a show as a humorist uh, that details my 10 tips for prosperity. Uh, there are a number of things I want to say to the young people of our nation who I find to be insufferable often <laughs> times. Yes, and yes. just things like say please and thank you, mm -hmm. put down your phone, uh, carry a handkerchief, <laughs> a handkerchief. <laughs> use intoxicants for crying out loud. And, uh, and um, some friends of mine began to say, you know, I like the, your point of view in your show. It sounds like it's coming from your book. And I said, oh, you know, there's a whole bunch of stuff I didn't have time for in my stage show. So I pitched around a book. And so it's, uh, you know, it's entertaining. It's funny. It's a, a bunch of stories from my life about what a jackass I am and how I've managed to do okay despite that. Uh, so, uh, you know, there, there are some allusions to Parks and Rec and my character. Mm -hmm. One, one, there's a chapter on eating red meat or how to grow uh, manly whiskers, things like that. <laughs> okay. Are you a, you a Second I, City guy? No, I come from straight theater. Uh, I, I I knew there's Amy. no such thing. <laughs> <laughs> quote, un, quote unquote. Yeah, okay. <laughs> quote unquote. <laughs> Forgive me. Legit theater. All right, that's <laughs> different, sir. Straight theater with two guys somewhere in the Midwest. <laughs> <laughs> Um, there were seven of us, um, <laughs> but I knew I knew them uh, like I knew Amy Poehler in the early '90s in Chicago. But 
uh, I was at like Steppenwolf, and I had my own theater company called the Defiant Theater, and we were doing you know Sam Shepard plays and Shakespeare. We'd do a Shakespeare play, but it, we'd do Hamlet, but Claudius would be like a cocaine king, and it would be oh, full nice. of like Ice Tea and NWA songs. <laughs> um, so I, I come from theater, and then only in my 30s did I start working at the Upright Citizens Brigade because I realized nobody. If you come from from quote unquote straight theater, people think you should be in drama, and they, they don't think you're funny because you didn't go to comedy school. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I said, well, I better go over to the comedy school and start smoking on the playground with those kids. Right on. <laughs> Sam Shepard was his. Pl- I just. I just. By the way. Fucking went to open up a pen and click the wrong way. And I clicked the pointy ah, end. I feel like I've been shit. shot. Hate that. Um, the uh, Sam Shepard. Did he do a play uh, with where he plays with the, the woman's name is May? Um, Oh fuck! Something about May. Uh, there yeah. Was a May. There was a woman I'm, named May. I'm only thinking because I something oh, about yeah. May. Yeah, he masturbated onto his face. Oh, oh yes, oh, damn, onto every no. month, but that okay. one. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was. Uh, I, I, it was the worst thing I ever did. Was a scene in acting class from. I think it was a Sam Shepard play. Yeah. Oh, it was an. Why intru- did they pick that one? I don't know. I, I was just me. I was terrible. What, what are the names of some of his plays? Oh, Buried Child, Fool for Love. I uh, was Fool for Love. Michelle Pfeiffer did the movie, right? That sounds right. Okay, yeah. Oh, I did a scene out of Fool for Love. It was brutal. The only thing I know about Sam Shepard is he was in uh, The Right Stuff. He certainly was. He's a great actor. He was a great actor in that. Yeah. That was great. He was the Chuck Yeager character. He was. Yeah, he's he's yeah. Uh, he's in a great movie coming out. Uh, a buddy of mine wrote August Osage County. He plays a, a great role in that. It was a Pulitzer Prize winning play a few years ago here in town. He's what you call stoic. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> uh, with with a granite visage? Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. <laughs> All right. I got some words to look up when I get home. Mm. You see, o- old, sa- old saddle face. Also. Old saddle face. <laughs> Which is something something I aspire to. I, <laughs> <laughs> I hope to be around that long. I gotta I gotta ask you about Parks and Rec. It's on hiatus. What's what's that about? Well, it's it's a that's a bit of an embellishment by the uh, the the muckrakers over at the Huffington Post. Oh, okay. oh boy. And NBC, you know, is trying to. F- figure out who to put in the game and and strategize how to get ahead here one of these days and so they put us on the bench for like two weeks oh, okay it's really not it's something that they do all the time where they're like you know what let's try and up this show's numbers by putting the voice in front of it right kind of right thing. Mm-hmm. and so we we just sat down for a minute but all right that's way different not going anywhere it is yeah, yeah we're yeah. I, I think we're uh, we're going to get to finish the season is that show completely scripted, <laughs> or is it? Because uh, Amy's a brilliant improver. I've seen her work, and she's um, one of the greatest I've ever seen. It. She's like a crazy comedy machine. You put a quarter in her, and she'll she'll crank out a, a seven part series. Right. Like harassment. It's unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> put a quarter in her. It's terrible. I kind of like this. Right. A 50 cent piece, excuse oh, me. Right. <laughs> um, it, is, it is entirely scripted. Our writers, uh, a room of writers led by Mike Schur, who comes from SNL and then The Office, um, they're brilliant. So we, we never need to make up a thing. But because we have people like Amy, we can shoot the incredible script and then say, okay, now what do you got? And then we screw around and find some other gold. And how much of that stuff makes uh, the show? Probably, I'd say, three or four moments a show, you know. Uh, You shoot a scene where it comes around to me and I have a punchline like, um, please don't touch my axe. And then uh, on take five through seven, I'll say, please don't touch my firewood implement or whatever the the BS is. And once in a while, it's funny. (laughs) <laughs> uh, with the others, quite frequently, it's funny, um, and uh, and sometimes they keep it in the show. Nice. What, and what is your one your play about, or your or your stage show? It's uh, it's something I've always, often aspired to do uh, is play the guitar and and entertain people where they let me finish. And, um, <laughs> I, I never even remotely came close to it. But then I realized if I can get them laughing, they don't care <laughs> how terrible my guitar playing is. So uh, there, it's a bunch of funny songs uh, with with all these anecdotes of, you know, here's here's a story about me being a complete idiot when I was a teenager. Um, it, interspersed, sort of dovetailed in with these lessons of, you know, 
say please and thank you. Don't look in the mirror. That's a big one. Can Don't you, look in the mirror. Avoid the mirror. Yeah, that's that's the key to a, a great self image. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Because you'll you'll kind of be well, down on all yourself. of the channels. All, all the commercials keep telling me I should look like Kira Knightley, and <laughs> and I feel good about that inside. And I mince about the sidewalk, feeling beautiful. And it, it works well unless I look in the mirror <laughs> and see, oh, Jesus. Makes sense. This is not, no, you're not, looking this very is not nice. cutting it. No. <laughs> uh, well, Bob, you, you're one of the few guys that really makes a mustache work in this day and age. I mean, it really I it, it. It works you. for you. I can't. How uh, long have you had the mustache? Well, uh, I'm a character actor, so it's one of the tools in my box. I, I love to pull it out when I'm playing a cop or a thug or whatnot. Mm. Uh, I guess I've had a pretty full you know, set of facial bracken since I was about. 20 or 19 but um i don't you know i don't i don't uh, go for one look so i'm i'm looking forward when my show is over to to shave it off put it away for a while oh, yeah. okay i got gotcha. you get sick of it uh i i don't mind it i usually i've never been on a series like this before so usually i look really different every three months and that's fun it's like a lon cheney lifestyle <laughs> um who are you you know i, I like to be unrecognizable uh, I found a way to do that in 20 years of stand-up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, now it's uh, I, I'm, I'm ready to to have the disguise of my clean-shaven face. What do you mean, Lon Chaney? Did he switch up the way his look all the time? Yeah, well, he he was the guy who played sort of every different monster, yeah. and, and he, he he was a an early uh, film makeup genius. He used to when he when he had to make his eyes look blind. He would cut out that filament from a hard-boiled egg between the egg and the shell, oh, shit. and lay a piece of Holy that shit. in over his eye, which I've That's tried. Committing. Wow, it's quite difficult. I would gather. You actually tried that? I did because I was broke, and uh, <laughs> I said, oh, "Lon Chaney did this." And I've, I talked to a guy whose dad did makeup with Lon Chaney years later, and he was like, "Oh, well, there's a whole bunch of other shit you got to do to it. But you, <laughs> you can't you know, just, just lay that in your eye. Yeah, you yeah. soak it in vinegar, and you know." Got to fog it up, I guess, or something. But, Ungoop it. But doesn't it? Yeah, doesn't it come apart? Or how do you how do you take it out? Like a lens is solid. Contact lens is solid. It's the um, taking it out. I, I couldn't answer because I never quite got it in. But it's <laughs> it's like a fabric. It's it's like that filamenty skin that pulls out from the inside of the shell. And he thought to put that on his eyes to look blind. It's pretty yeah, smart. Pretty, yeah. It's amazing now. It's just so easy to do. They just throw a contact lens in you and fucking you're done. Yeah. Which is what I ended up having to, to do. I was like, oh, this that was a day of pain. Uh, how much are those white contact lenses? Why'd you want to look blind? Uh, it was for a film, uh, an independent film that didn't have any budget. And I was like, oh, I'll, I'll take care of the blind Yeah, I got, I got the blind <laughs> stuff. So don't worry about it. I got it, guys. I'm on it. Got some eggs. But Chino did a good job of looking blind in a Scent of a Woman. Like he, he, uh, There was something about it. It didn't look like... It just looked like he was kind of not seeing anybody. And I'm like, what a talent that is to... Yeah, some people can't pull that off. And they're but it sounds blind stupid people. and simple, but yeah. to be able to look at somebody but not see them and look yeah. like you're not seeing them is pretty fucking impressive. Especially when you have to act with somebody. Yeah. That would be a little That's the thing hard is, to do. Uh, I, if you, you, in, in the case of Al Pacino, you can be good at acting. <laughs> uh, I unfortunately had to try and stick, stick an egg in my face <laughs> <laughs> to pull it off. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little different. <laughs> yeah. Is it hard to go from uh, because this format of Parks and Rec is, you know, again, it's a, it's a different feel. It's kind of, it feels like a documentary style comedy, and then to kind of go back to straight comedy after that, or what's more traditional, probably isn't as fun. Uh, it's just, it's different. I mean, I, I come from the stage, and my wife and I did a play this year, which we're actually bringing to New York next year, called Annapurna, which is, uh, it, it's really a lot of fun. It's a, it's a comedy, but then it gets really dramatic. It's a really great piece of writing. And that's, that's our first love. And I guess in the theater, you do what's ever in the season. So maybe you're doing, like, uh, the death of a salesman, and then you turn around and do some wacky... You can go do the Book of Mormon or something. And so it's kind of fun to switch up disciplines. We do get spoiled on my show. Because of the documentary style and everything's handheld, we don't have a lot of marks like you do in a film. Hmm. And you can basically be sloppier and lazier. <laughs> and so then you go back and work on a film, and they're like, oh, no, Nick, we need you to... Please do the same thing every time. And you're like, oh, yeah, I forgot. 
Mm. They let me do whatever I want over at our hilarious chuckle fest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's, it's got to be nice just to fucking kind it's of... It's got to be freeing. Yeah, yeah, being on the mark sucks. It is many scenes. Like, if we were shooting this right now, they'd be shooting through the windows, so there'd be no cameras in here. Mm. And so you, you become much more relaxed and natural and... I never do this unless I'm yeah, the last. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the worst though is when you think you're doing it right, and they're like, "All right, we got to stop because you, you're in the wrong place." Oh uh, like, no! Fuck. What do you think? Worst. Like, oh man, I'm brilliant here. This is great. One yeah. of my best performances. This is the one. Yeah, that ain't gonna work. <laughs> yeah. it's like, oh, I have no sense. I have no sense of what works or doesn't work. Oh, uh, do you get scared when you act at all? I, I get nervous. I don't. Uh, I. I I, my first gig was as an altar boy at the Catholic Church in my hometown, um, which I believe is on page 29. Uh, and um, that was when I learned, uh, I started, you have uh, uh, these glass containers called cruets. One has water and one has wine. And the priest mixes them uh, as part of the ceremony. And he somehow magically turns it into the blood of Jesus and then he drinks it. <laughs> Um, and invariably, I, I served under several priests, and they all <laughs> really humorously, it's like a Mel Brooks scene, the, take the wine and then go, gluck, 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 there you go, and then take the water and go, boop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, all right, that's an equal mixture. <laughs> that's all you need. And I started, uh, I started reviewing the wine with facial expressions for the, for the crowd. You know, so I'd be standing there and I'd take a whiff of the wine and, kind of shake my head and make a frowny face or sometimes i'd, I'd say huh, please, pleasing bouquet tinged with just a hint of regret <laughs> <laughs> and uh my dad t took me aside and was like this is not the place to entertain the audience this is the congregation but i said oh okay I'll, then I, I guess i need to find a place where people enjoy my, mm. mug, my mugging more than church yeah yeah no mm. issues at church. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you're yeah, altar boy. You're you that amazing. You automatically think it's. No, it's true. I uh, no, I, I escaped unscathed. We had we had a, a good a bu good bunch of guys, but it was always really scary to to hear all the stories. Uh, Oof! You know, like, mm. I never hear any stories from anybody in real life, so I'm assuming a lot of people are lying. That's what I assume. It's like anything happened to you? No. No, no, we had a great <laughs> And meanwhile, like, as he's saying that, in his head is just this horror movie is playing, yeah. House of Horror. Yeah, it's like House of Horror. Go back to the House of Horror. It's playing thing. in his mind. I'm perfectly well adjusted. I love my Cub Scouts. Are you, yeah. <laughs> are you willing to take a lie? <laughs> the yeah. Test. Yeah, we gotta, um... yeah, nothing happened. The fact that I wake up screaming every night has nothing <laughs> yeah. to do with that. Right. A lot oh, of people right. get night terrors. A lot of people finger their dogs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Leave me alone. <laughs> it, could, it could happen. <laughs> you a married man, are you? I am. I ha I'm happily married. I've been with my wife for 14 years. Me the great Megan Mullally. From Did you say wife of 14 years? Uh, yes, we've been oh. together for 14. We just oh. had our 10th anniversary. Oh, <laughs> See, I was oh dating a, for four. Yeah, yeah, I was making an underage girl joke. Oh, my, wife, my, wife, my wife of 14, 14 years. years yeah. This didn't really go she's, over. She's so I, terrific. Like, uh, yeah. <laughs> you put a quarter in her. <laughs> that quarter is very <laughs> handy with women. <laughs> <laughs> and she's uh, in, the in theater with you. Well, I, Grace. I, I assume, yeah, yeah. yeah, she she yeah. Yes, she's yes. done Broadway shows. She, mm -hmm. she was in uh, Mel Brooks' Young Frankenstein, which is one of the greatest things I've ever seen. Who was she in that? Uh, the Madeline Kahn mm -hmm. part, yeah. Elizabeth. <laughs> The oh, Madeline, not, I, I thought the he Madeline Kahn part. I thought he meant in the movie. Yeah. No, no, the musical. Oh, they did a Broadway okay. musical, yeah. I was going to go, like, yeah. wow, that's like, like, wow you're getting older. You were married mm -hmm. to Madeline Kahn? What <laughs> happened? <laughs> yeah, it didn't work out. No. And she does a little no. Parks and Rec, a little bit. She does, yeah. She yeah. works on my show. She does. As your ex? She she does uh, all kinds of stuff. She has an amazing new band called Nancy and Beth. We were we were just analyzing it last night because it's um, they, they do old fashioned like kick ass blues and rock songs that are a little more obscure. But they add the production value of like a Beyonce show. So she and her friend Stephanie Hunt, they do all this super sexy, intense choreography. Well, it's like an old Tina Turner kind of show. And it's just something nobody does anymore. Right. Like we've all become so lazy that we sit on a stool <laughs> just play and play it. a mandolin and like right. Let me send to you about coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Appreciate me. But yeah, they're they're called Nancy and Beth. They're, uh, they're super a lot of fun. And I I guest for them a lot. I, I perform a couple different rap songs for them. Really? We, we do hits from the bong and uh, smell yo dick by Risque. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> 
So yeah. there's some mirth. That one. Is that a real There's some mirth in the show. Oh, that's a real song. It is. Oh, Smell yeah. your dick. It's incredible. Yeah, it. it's a, oh yeah, yeah. I've heard it before. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, from, Sam's played it. What did, what did you think of the passing of Lou Reed? Everyone's talking about Lou Reed today. Well, I, I doffed my cap. I mean, I, uh, I'm, I'm also a really big fan of a very close friend of his, Laurie Anderson. And, and You're a big fan. Oh, God, yeah. Hold on, okay. She was a weirdo. Hold on, though. She's a weirdo, We yeah. started our show because they married in 2008. I did not know that. And then we played Oh, Superman, because that's the only thing we know. Mm-hmm. W- why are you a big fan? We don't get it. She's a performance artist, obviously. She is, yeah. But uh, explain Laurie Anderson to us. Well, she, to me, I mean, uh, she's off the charts smart, and so I, I, I feel daunted trying to... <laughs> Like, like, explain Stephen Hawking to me. Um, yeah, yeah. But she, uh, but what makes to, her so brilliant? Well, uh, you put a quarter in her. <laughs> <laughs> she, uh, she is a storyteller um, who takes her stories and uh, performs them in a in a really innovative way. She also plays the violin. So I, I used to see her live in the eighties and nineties, and she. She just puts on really trippy, cool shows using sound and, and visual, um, and so they're like these little theater pieces, just r- rife with great ideas. So she's a progressive thinker, you know. She she does a, an amazing job of making fun of society. I mean, in O oh Superman, there's that bit about uh, "Hello, this is your mom," and she she takes uh, sort of hilarious human dogma and points it back up to us to make us laugh at ourselves but her shows were the greatest i mean if you like pink floyd the wall or any kind of like intense visual kick-ass rock show it was a, a sort of like that at a library well, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a huge fan of hers and, th- and that made me, i, I love lou reed as well and then when they hooked up i was like fantastic wow there you go. Please run our country. We got, we got we got our answer finally. Yeah, that's how we right, started the show. I don't know. I'm still too shallow to uh, well appreciate it. Yeah, it's not for everyone. I'm uh, sure. You know. You know what sounds but, good to me? Uh, Swedish supergroup ABBA. <laughs> 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 they also have their place in the pantheon. Exactly. Her, she's she's also really funny, um, and I. Maybe I don't know. I didn't come across in that Superman video. Well, the the Superman thing is weird because um, when uh, when nine eleven happened, uh, that that song resurfaced because it had all of these prescient lines of "Here come the planes, the, oh, the okay. American planes." Oh, so you got some conspiracy theorists going. Look at this. I think I I think that the Bush administration may have been Laurie Anderson fans as well. Oh, so they that. listened to it. And then perpetrated uh, that. Or at least the Velvet Underground. So Jesse Ventura yeah. could then mm. explain it to everybody. All right. Apparently, uh, <laughs> W loved to crank up Sweet Jane when he was going yeah. on a night mission. When he was partying? Over Tuscaloosa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you got a very unique voice, I was man. just... I'm, I'm hearing Christian Bale from American Psycho. Really? <laughs> and then they go really obscure Dave Rabbit, the, Dude, the Vietnam job. Look what I wrote down. Whoa. What? Oh. Did you do the, I wrote down Dave Rabbit. Dave, Dave Rabbit? Because I was going to point out that Nick sounded like him, and I didn't want to forget. Dave, Dave Rabbit. Exactly. Like we there's uh, some Vietnam tapes of this guy that used to just you know be a DJ over there during the shit and uh, I don't know they became quite popular on our show. You sound exactly like him and a little Christian Bale, no, from American Psycho or or is that a stretch? No, I wasn't really picking that up. I've actually heard that a lot, which is American oh, Psycho. Okay. It is. It's All right, thank a, you. It's a very funny. And I don't. It's a, such a funny thing, like you know, you have a really. You sound exactly like American. Psycho. <laughs> yeah, you know what? That's <laughs> like not. The, <laughs> you're right. You sound like psychopath. a rapist. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's. The case. I hear also, um, and I'm not super familiar with, I guess their their normal speaking voices, but drivers often say when they don't see me, they say if I if I didn't know it was you i would swear i had charlie sheen in the back of my car oh yeah there is a and also thing sometimes nicholas cage yes i hear a little nicholas cage Cage. we had him jimmy would know jimmy sat down on a flight with nicholas cage and had a little conversation with yeah let's hear about that well could you could you uh, I, I, could you once in a six hour period go huh <laughs> that's all i need from you <laughs> he wasn't jimmy. he wasn't very talkative with jimmy and jimmy wanted to be wait, talkative wait, with him and you, it was embarrassing oh you want to hear dave rabbit who we really think you sound like oh, sure please oh, all right e-rock 
Sorry about that yelling and screaming, but Pete and I are on a yeah. trip, and we thought we'd have to get in on that song. Yeah. Wow, he's, one got done a, by he's got a glottal fry going the on. The big yeah. three dog night. <laughs> it's called Mama Told Me Not to Come. <laughs> now you can take this two ways. As a title, or your girlfriend's name is Mama. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. He passed recently. I'm yeah, he just died. Yeah. Those were all like, uh, like, like just he, amazing. What did he I, hijack I, the signal and fucking broadcast? Right? Oh yeah, it was all illegal broadcast. And there's not much. Uh, if anyone else has audio of that guy, I would love to hear it. We only got, a, I don't know, one show or something of the guy. It's yeah. definitely something. That he had a little more of more. that gritty, he, grainy, gravelly he thing. Had, he had that good Vietnam shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, it does. It sounds like he's talking while he's still holding in a hit. That's uh, that's some good fucking. Well, that's what those guys shit. would do, though. They would do yeah. the hit and then just start talking uh, without. Well, uh, <laughs> exhale as they went. Yeah, yeah. that was back when, uh, if, if during this radio interview, we would have tons of Marlboro Reds and joints in this room. Oh yeah, and not think twice about it. Not even. Now we only have three. I, th <laughs> I, 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 I love watching old movies like that too. I was watching something. Uh, an episode of Columbo or something, and, <laughs> and I, I love that dumb show. And uh, they had a scene inside an airplane, and there's just people smoking and oh. people just walking through the gates into the plane with not a, a, an ounce of security. Oh, it's crazy. You kind of remember that shit, though. I love the notion. Uh, the first major commercial flight I took, I, I went from my farm town in Illinois to the University of Illinois. And ended up in this kabuki theater play, which we were suddenly going to take to Japan. So that was my first big flight, was nonstop oh, Chicago wow. to Tokyo. Okay. And we were, it was 1991, we were like 21 years old. And we get on this huge jumbo jet, and just behind row 17 was the smoking section. Yeah, <laughs> which yeah, in yeah. hindsight is yeah. so yeah. idiotic. <laughs> You're yeah. in a huge soup can, and they're like, everybody it's a below two. Right. Yeah, one yeah. third it's can smoke. Unless they've invented the force field, yeah. you are not uh, going to be in 16, smoke please don't smoke. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like the dumb restaurants where they're non-smoking areas. What the hell? Yeah. Did yeah. it stink the whole so flight? Stink. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> I never flew on a smoking flight. But I, Come on, Jimmy. Never in my life. I, I took one trip to Seattle in like 1990. When did the smoking stop, though? I don't know. That, it was a continental it was in, flight. International that flights international. It stopped uh, later. Japan Airlines was one of the last. If you took if you took Japan Airlines, that was one of the last ones to stop it. Oh yeah, they love smoking. Uh, Japanese maybe. people, you sit at a blackjack table in Atlantic City. You know, with Japanese people, you can't even see the cards. It's they just love uh, you're, in, you're encased in in smoke. You know, Jimmy might be right. I just assume I was on a flight where they were smoking. Never remember. No, I don't think. All right, uh, sporting I, oh, events, of course. Holy that, shit! And yeah. concerts, my god. I remember I was like 12 years old. I'm on a plane yeah. going to L.A. and and just smoke everywhere. It's how they allowed people to just have little flaming objects in the plane. Yeah. It, it just seems so odd now that for safety reasons, in a vehicle that's carrying a huge amount of oxygen, the oxygen and fuel, and yeah, yeah, yeah and there you go. Everyone have a lighter, light up. And they're worried about our dumb cell phones. Our cell phones are, you know, <laughs> right? Are you <laughs> like me? That? Please remove your shoes. <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You used to smoke. Turn your cell phones off. What? <laughs> you know what we used to do up here? <laughs> this we used was, to have fire in this our seats. Was crazy. <laughs> right. We were pinching it's stewardesses' all, asses, and it's all well, not at twelve. Yeah, well, I I, I say uh, good luck with the book, Nick. Have we sold it properly? I don't even know. It's called Paddle Your Own Canoe, and yeah. it's uh, it's Nick Offerman, and it's got some true stories in there, and some life advice, um, and some some humorous illustrations by a very funny guy named Mike Mitchell. Uh, including some illustrations of me performing breakdance moves. Oh. Um, also, some acceptable and unacceptable versions of facial hair. I, I'm right on that page. Look at that. Including, when I first met Harry Connick Jr., when he was working on Will and Grace, uh, I had a goatee. Very mm. funny, hilarious, talented guy. And I met him, you know, hi, this, this is Nick. Hey, how you doing? And he pulled me in with the handshake and said, where I come from, we call that a prison pussy. <laughs> <laughs> and I said... 
I think you and I are going to get along. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, he, he is so funny. Oh, the douchebag. I think you got this uh, down. <laughs> I'm looking at the illustration. The douchebag. <laughs> the, yeah. the douchebag. Uh, the, the nut smudge. Yeah. The joke. I think you, you figured out the facial hair. <laughs> are you doing your signings? I am, yeah. I've been doing. I, I had a big signing at Union Square at the Barnes and Noble, and it's weird. It's a whole new medium. Uh, mm. The book, <laughs> the book <laughs> turns out, yeah. This stuff they're putting it out on paper now. It's amazing, and it's it's rather permanent. Like uh, mm. it's funny because you you know you you tell jokes, you tell stories, and there's something ephemeral to it. Like you nowadays, it exists forever on the internet, but it's still it's. Uh, you listen to it and it's gone. Hmm. But when it's written on paper in the library, people take it seriously in a different way. <laughs> or, or maybe you get a different breed of nerd in the line. And, and I say nerd lovingly, counting myself amongst their number. But they're they're like, I've, I've memorized your book. And there's a few things I wanted to talk to you about. <laughs> oh, boy. Out behind the building. And you're like, well, hang on, I'll be right there. That's yeah, the creepy ones. Right before the... A bullet enters your side. That's right. <laughs> yeah, well, way to end it on a fun note. <laughs> yeah, no fucking, problem. Nick signing is going to be like the fucking end of uh, talk radio. <laughs> Enjoy my book. You're a dead fucker. <laughs> uh, do you have any signings coming up? So I was going to plug them, but we don't have them in front of us. That's why I was. And it's oh, Nick man. Offerman on Twitter. Uh, Nick underscore Offerman. I do have, uh, I have events coming up in Toronto and Vancouver, November 2nd and 3rd. And uh, I have my touring American Ham show. Uh, the only hard ticket show is at the Dallas House of Blues, November I don't know, 16th or so. The night before Meat Fight. Oh, meat Fight? That's right. I'm, uh, I'm ju- <laughs> my brother and I are judging an event in Dallas called Meat Fight, which raises money for multiple sclerosis. Mm, it's hard research. to say. Uh, yeah. we'll, we just say MS. Yeah. MS. Makes it easier. <laughs> and uh, where can people go to get your signings? Your Wait, we got to ask about Meat Fight. Oh, yeah, what I'm happens sure at that event? Four barbecue pit masters come together uh, and uh, gird see. their loins, literally. Uh, they gird and smoke their loins and feed them to me. And uh, I reward one of them with a nod of approval. See, uh, I, I was assuming something violent. Meat fight. See, I was assuming something really fun between two gentlemen. We all <laughs> came to different conclusions. <laughs> <laughs> It could, I, don't, I haven't gotten a lot of details, so it could hmm. be a, a penis slapping sure, sure. facial situation. <laughs> All right. That's fun, too. What, whatever it is, we'll be raising a good amount of hmm. money for MS research. Absolutely. Yes. It's not gay if it's for charity. <laughs> whatever it is. <laughs> Let's get the um, shirts made. You can, yeah. you can find out about anything you want uh, with my book or my, my tour at my website, OffermanWoodshop.com. I, I built that canoe that's on the cover. Is that oh, true? Yeah. That's that's real, right? Yeah. The wood thing? Uh, yeah, I make furniture and boats and stuff. Oh, you do? Manly guy. How much you charge to do a... Uh, I'm trying to get a, a fucking a nice, a, a small little TV stand made, but uh, oh, yeah? it's extremely expensive to get done. It is. Why it's, do you have it made? Because they don't have the size I need. I need a very narrow one because of the way my living room is. Oh, um, custom uh, made. Custom made. I need it custom. Come on, um, Nick. You could do it for him. There, there's a guy in town, actually, my friend Jimmy DeResta. Who, who, you probably know John DeResta. I know John. I was just talking about him. He's a comedian. He lives in L.A. now. Yeah. Really funny guy. He, he uh, His brother, Jimmy, is on the Lower East Side, and he's an incredible fabricator of things. Ooh. And he makes furniture. He, he can make you anything out of any material. He's Do you have crazy. dado blades? We have dado blades, yeah. Yeah, you cut yourself a dovetail joint. Yeah, that's right. That's nice. <laughs> like that. That's good. Talking it's, a man, it's a manly guy right there. I like the way you talk. I like that. Do you sell the canoes? Mm-hmm. We've sold one canoe on commission. I've made two, one for myself and one for Jimmy com, And uh, they're expensive. Like, you can't make canoes for a profit. Um they take months to make. There's wow. a lot of pieces, and there's no straight lines. Look, on other people yeah. do that stuff and just say, "Look, I I made this." Well, we do. No, we, we get have, a sweatshop. I've got a shop full of woodworkers, but unfortunately, it's good-hearted, and we're trying to make these youngsters uh, a living. So these are amazing too. These uh, canoes like this because it it literally looks like furniture. It floating. It, it's it beautiful. Does. The it's, sides are so nice and. Uh, Shiny. At first, oh. it gets really hard. Like you don't want to take it out. You, you want to take it out. You're like, well, what? it's like putting a wonderful dresser in the water. Just I should have k- built a Corvette. Kicking a coffee table <laughs> into yeah. the water. Don't want to but bang yeah. this up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, a lot of sanding, a lot of wet sanding with that. 
I, I, I eschew the wet sanding really? as much as possible. Yeah? It's a, it's, it's a great finishing technique, but it's like a super high-end, yeah. refined museum quality. Yes. And I try to have all the stuff I make be of a more rustic, natural, uh, like it, it'll fit into a modern home, but it'll also fit oh, okay. into Paul Bunyan's So what, do you lodge. just use a rasp? <laughs> I, I spit Finish on it. Finish it with a rasp. I, I sand up to about 150, 180, but Ooh, yeah, that's make, some fine grit. 220 is is, is as high as I like. A little to go. high, as high as you go. Yeah, yeah I hear you. I'm going to call Jimmy DeResta and say, Nick Hoffman <laughs> said you can hook me up with a nice little uh, unit. He said uh, it wouldn't run me more than 600 bucks. He, uh, <laughs> he'll, he'll say, hey, I'm from Long Island. Hey, I'm sure he didn't give you a quote. Uh, he he isn't much faster than I am. He's he's incredible. He's somebody who's kind of a hero to me. He you can be like, hey, can you make me these headphones out of glass <laughs> or or steel or yarn? He'd be like, oh uh, yeah, I'll give them to you next Got Wednesday. I'll, you know what? Because the quotes I've gotten, it's like a, I need a, it's a very specific thing. It's not too complicated. It's pretty simple what I want. Yeah. But it's just I need a certain size, and that's what's hard to find. You got to go custom. Sure. And uh, the the quotes are astronomical, and it's just not worth it. It's wow, like, it's a tough thing. I mean, uh, th there's a resurgence of artisanal hand crafting in our country, which I'm a big fan of because, in our communities, if we can all begin making our own stuff again, you know, you make you make leather belts and boots. I'll I'll grow a garden. You knit dresses. Oh, we'll I have to do that. I'll wear them in the garden. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, I'll spank you we'll, with my belt. We'll get together <laughs> and have a meat fight. <laughs> Sounds great, but it, it's a Jeffersonian thing. If a community can support itself, then we can tell China to go suck it at some point. That would be nice. Which yeah. would, would be nice. That's would all be I'm great. saying. We're being held as uh, their little puppets these well, days. They, a lot, they own a lot of our country. Well, now. I know. That's the that's kind of awkward. Catch. Would yeah. be nice to have that. <laughs> that not is happening. the catch. Yeah, yeah. kind of tough to tell them to go fuck themselves. Well, yeah. once once we all start cobbling our own shoes, <laughs> then we'll, we'll get to that point. You know, it'll be, right. it'll be has a good point. It literally is tough to tell them to go fuck themselves. Uh, you got, what is Chinese for go fuck yourself? You gotta learn Mandarin first. Yeah, you gotta yeah. learn Mandarin. No, I thought that was kind of funny, Jimmy. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't, I'm just weighing the options. It's not a bad point, actually. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of hard. To... All right, let's get Nick out of here. Nick uh, off, let's let's Puck. us get out of here. Yeah, oh, yeah, my went, God, we're yeah, missing we, Sam's show. Oh, wow. Yeah, oh. We, we went late for oh, Nick sorry. Offerman. That means it, it went well. Yes. Yes. And we're relieved that Tim Conway's gone. Yes. I was much oh. more gentle. Yes, and, and we appreciate it. Yeah. Out of yes. the two, I would assume you would be the meanie, not Indeed. not Tim Conway. Yeah, Ugh. Tim's a rotten little man. <laughs> <laughs> and Parks and Rec, of course, coming back. That hiatus thing was just short lived, a couple weeks. That's yeah, that's BS. That's very <laughs> that's very good news. Yeah. And do we have anybody to? Um, oh, Nick, had, I forgot to mention uh, that I'll be at the Beacon this Friday with Dice. <laughs> Uh, so tickets, nice uh, go to Ticketmaster if you want to see uh, me and Dice, and don't if you don't. And who do we have tomorrow, anybody? Mm, we'll Who's figure coming it out in tomorrow? tomorrow? You know? We don't know until we get here. I know, I never know. We'll figure it out tomorrow. All right. Nick Offerman, right, uh, pleasure meeting you, sir. Thank you, gentlemen. Come back yes, and see sir. us, all right? Yeah, great to meet you. All right. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Robin, 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 Robin,